Hi, YouTube. So, um, for those of you who don't know, we are broadcasting both on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so welcome, you be to be. We're gonna get Facebook up and running. Vertical or horizontal? What do we always do with Facebook, Sean? This way, but we've talked about where you can do the other way too. So I just want to double check. Okay, thank you. Hey everyone, um, you shut your laptop so now you can't look at your comments on YouTube. Okay, any reason why you shut that when I had it all set up for you? Okay, I'll set it up. You can say hi to everyone. Hi everybody, hello, hello, hello. I'm on this side. How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's well. Ready to go and play some chuck it to Should be fun. Hi Angela. Gail, hope everyone's good. He's almost there, looking to make sure we're good to go. Megan, hello. I just it's want to make sure we're public and not unlisted, so give me right. one sec. Because sure we had our um, club couture this weekend, so I want to make sure that we are uh, public. Hi, Jen and Jill and Emily over on YouTube. I'm assuming we're public. Yeah. I don't know. You guys will let us know. All right, everyone. So just so everyone on Facebook knows what we're doing, we do lives on Tuesday on Facebook, Wednesday on YouTube, Thursday on Instagram, and Friday on TikTok. But we also want to get our people on YouTube that I like to watch later. And then Jazzy's taking both videos and editing them for future videos. So it's kind of fun. I want to first thank everyone. Um, last week, we um, we haven't been live a lot this month. It's been a rough month. We did some traveling. I haven't been feeling good. We got the vaccine last week. Migraine, but now we're feeling great. Uh, so we weren't live as much as we wanted to be. But we're back. So today, once again, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. So make sure you're subscribed to all of that. Uh, we are checking for questions, so if you have any questions and we miss it, or on YouTube we miss it, or we miss it on Facebook, uh, let us know and we will get caught up. And I'm going to go get their beds really quick. You can kind of show them some of the stuff we're using tonight. Right, so tonight we've got our beautiful black framed white background on here. Let me get these off of here. And we're, of course we're going to be using the kind words for that. So this is our Sylvie, again a black frame with a white background, and he's got something that he's going to do I think a little later after we do this, we're going to show something, which is I think is why he's got these out, and those look lovely. So that'll be a little a second part of something, that's going to be fun, fun, fun. So hello Lori, Diana, Anita, Debbie, Gail, I said Gail already, right? Haley, who else is out there? And Beth, hi Beth, how are you? And over on the YouTube side, I see um, Julie and Diane hi. B. Yes, and we do have your questions up, so we'll try to grab them. All right, um, so I'm going to be honest. So many of you have reached out and said, Ken, will Chocotour Inc. work with the new mug press by Cricut? First, let me stress, I don't know. We haven't actually tested it. This is the first time we're trying it. Number two, even if it does work, um, I'm going to be honest. This is $200, and we got this. How much did you get this little toaster oven for? Uh, I got it on sale, and it came down to about uh, $90. $90. Um, the biggest difference is time and stuff. So um, I am not endorsing this and saying you need to go out and get it or it's worth the money, I'm just testing it to see if it will work. And I'll explain the differences between that and using just like the infusible ink or sublimation ink. So we are gonna show that off. Sean already kind of went over all the projects we're doing. It is spring, it is time for bees. We all know that the farmer's market is super trending. So we are gonna use this transfer. We also finally got our Facebook shop up and running again. So all of our products are listed on Facebook and we can point you in the right direction. If something is out of stock, uh, let us know and we can let you know when they come back into stock. 
for our Club Couture members. Uh, the Fab First is coming up, and your Happy Meal is almost here. If you're a Club Couture member, you guys get the best perks on the planet. We can't tell you all those amazing perks. So, if you want to know why our Club Couture members were literally dying this weekend during our live video, stay tuned because Jazzy is editing it as she laughs through the whole thing. Let's just say I did a project. It was rough, but it turned out okay, I think. Just was a rough process, wasn't it, Sean? Yes. So, I am taking out our uh, staples in the back. I know Sean already told you this. This is our 9x12 Sylvie frame. Um... So I'm going to show you a little thing here. YouTube can see it right there. Facebook. Sometimes our boards come with little blemishes on them. And no need to freak out. Just grab one of our board erasers. And it'll buff that right out. Now, all of our products um, have a 30-day defective return policy. So if it's not to your uh, liking, you can always return it. This, though, is not coming up like I want. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes you gotta put a little elbow grease in it. Maybe a little glue got dripped down or something. Who knows? That's what I'm thinking. I'll be right back. I'm gonna I'll spray right a little bit of my cleaning stuff. Hi, Miss Jasmine. Hi, Julie. YouTube and Ecamm. And of course, we can see it way over there, too, in the big screen. I think once the design on it, you won't see it, but. So I always recommend opening your products, taking a peek at them, just because um, as great as chocolate tour products are, just like anything, there could be a few times that there might be a little blemishes and you want to report those to us if we are a club couture member or to Chalk Central within 30 days of getting that product. So I always tell people, open them up, inspect it, all that good jazz. All right, we're going to start with the frame, and then we're going to play with the mug press and ink. So, this is our B-size kind words. I am seeing everyone use this uh, transfer. It's super cute, super on trends, got the bees. We're actually going to use these four colors with it. So, eucalyptus for the leaves, black gold for the honey, and then golden hour. I think I'm going to do the golden hour here. A lot of people will ask, where do you get your ideas? A lot of times, you guys, I my starting off point is this catalog. So I just kind of go through the catalog and look. The great thing about our catalog, which I think really should be called an inspiration guide, is the fact that every single transfer we release has a project with it. So if you have a transfer and you're like, gosh, where do I start? You know, what direction? I tell people all the time, start in the catalog. You can see where they use the darker green, I'm using the lighter green. Um, but always start there. It's a great way to get inspiration. All right. So I'm gonna grab our fuzz and cloth. We're gonna fuzz this up. We made a, uh, I don't know when it will be uploaded, but we made a banner pennant with these. And it turned out really cute. It did. Now this um, project is, or this transfer I should say, is got a lot going on for being a little B-size transfer. Um, it's pretty detailed. So I'm going to give you guys some tricks here. Um, first thing, we'll place it on our board. I thought it was something, something, but it was nothing, nothing. Okay, so we have it on our board here. And what I do is on something like this, I do the pull and peel method, which I basically break down into threes. So section one, section two, section three. Then you can pull it and use our quick dry tool. Now we have the small squeegee. We have the mini squeegee, the four inch squeegee, the multi-tool and the detail tool. And these all, I, my go-to is the mini. Um, however, I'm loving the detail tool, especially for really tight spaces. Um, but we'll be using a little bit of all of them. 
and I like to get my paste ready. So I'm gonna open up all of the paste. This is the new Creamy Dreamy formula. In fact, this is a brand new one that we're opening here. So this is how they come. And this stuff, you guys, it is creamy, dreamy, amazing. There is a learning curve to it, not a bad learning curve. I think it's just we've used the old paste so much. We've learned its little um, tricks. This is the same, same way. Um, I still do add a little bit of water before use because uh, even though it is creamy, dreamy, it just gives it that nice consistency. We still clean our jars, do all that. Uh, even though this does have a longer dry time, it still will um, dry on you. This is a brand new one, and you can see that even though it's creamy, dreamy, the thing you're not going to hear is on our old paste when you would stir it, you get that kind of snap, crackle, pop sound. You won't get that with this. It is definitely more of a consistency of, our other one was cake batter. I'd say this is more of a, a nice creamy sour cream. Um, but you can see on Golden Hour here, it's got a little bit of a film there. And that's just because we've used this a lot. And I, even though um, it incorporates still pretty well, you're gonna wanna stir that because it still can give you a little bit of a lump in there. And then, a lot of people were like, well, I even have to use the fine mist with this new stuff. I heard it's so great. I, because we leave our lids off, I say yes, but you will get a feel for just like everyone else does. I have to say, I like uh, Cindy's uh, comment. She's doing multitasking watching you and Gonzaga. Oh, Gonzaga, that's right. That was their, is it their first game tonight? Um, if, it, in the, if this is the Elite Eight, I'm not so you're gonna have to explain who Gonzaga is. So Gonzaga is the college from here, Spokane. Uh, it's a Catholic school, private Catholic uh, college school, um, and they have done so well in basketball. They actually are undefeated. They've uh, they've made it as far as the Final Four, right? I Once think so, yeah. or just the Sweet Sixteen? I forget. Okay, so I'm starting with Eucalyptus I'm using the mini uh, squeegee. I'm gonna grab Black Velvet next. Now, a couple things on this. The black velvet, I'm trying to see what colors I want to do here. Uh, this is pretty pigmented stuff. And because we are doing the paste and peel method, which is basically we are putting some down, peeling it, drying it. Since it's going to stay on the transfer for a bit of time, it probably, well, I should just say it will stain our transfer. Do we need to worry about that, Mr. Shawnee? Absolutely not. Why not? Because the only thing we have to worry about is making sure that the mesh part of the transfer is clean and this stuff cleans very well it just stains the part that's not being used anyway yeah so i am going to show you how we clean with the new uh, paste we found a way i'm going to use my detail tool here and this is what's really nice it's even smaller than the um multi-tool at first i was like oh, i don't think i'm going to use it i really like the multi-tool but it's really nice to get into these tighter spaces where you're afraid you might touch the uh that black okay so we're doing the paste and pull so we're going to remove going backwards so we put down golden hour last so i'm going to remove that so we have a question from jennifer sure. miss miss Burkamp. um when ordering the paste is there a way to tell if you're getting old or new what is the answer to that sean you're going to only be getting new everything has changed over so we are only in new paste and that is why That's if you've been online anytime lately you'll have seen we are out of a lot of paste it's because we are in the midst of transferring everything to the new paste mm -hmm. um which means we're running out of stuff because everyone wants a new paste so um but yes you will be getting the new paste yep. okay so we're gonna go ahead and reveal so this is the paste now we're doing the pull, lift it up, just like that. I'm going to grab my quick dry tool. Now this has got two settings on it, a high and a low. I'm going to show you some stuff I've learned with this new paste, starting with on the RDS here. I don't know if you can see that. So the black is a little bit on the thinner side. It's an easy fix, especially on this board. Um, but I will say that's the only thing I kind of tell people like, be careful how much water you do add because you can get it 
to where it does this. This is where it seeps. Um, two reasons it does that. Number one, I didn't get the transfer down good enough. You know, or number two, my paste was too thin. And I can tell you the paste is too thin because you can see the other stuff looks really good. So we're going to clean that in just a sec. Now, this is a new tip I'm giving people. Normally, when we would do the paste and peel method, I would just take my finger and just push it down. And we do not do that anymore. The reason why is this ink or the paste is so... Um, it takes a little longer to dry and it's so pigment that even your finger picking up, it will... You could potentially... Yeah. yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the bottom half. I think it's easier to do it that way. So, because my black was a little bit on the thinner side, I'm just going to stir it real good. So, Lita has a question. Aren't you afraid of drying the paste into the transfer as you're drying? No. Not at all. So, the paste is um, water-soluble. So, all you need to do is um, get, it wet. get it wet. We've had some designers leave paste on for weeks now. That was our older paste. The newer paste might be a little different, um, but I'll show you how we clean it to where it's not, I'm not as worried. I'm not gonna say it won't happen, but you might have it where it will stain, like I said, your transfer, but the part we're really concerned about is where the mesh is, which is this, what you see is white. And as long as you clean your products after use and take good care of them, there should be no reason for worries on that. So there was a, a, an off subject question with our friend Nancy Yerkel, who's, Hi, also, Nancy. who's also a golden lover and owner. She says, and a club picture member. And a club picture member. She's wanting to know what's the word on the bundle of joy. So we have found out our bundle of joy should be delivered here. Well, we'll um, pick her up, or him up. Him up, when? Uh, sometime in the first week of June. So a couple things. Um, so he's almost here. We need to think of names because we were going to name him. Uh, we liked Hank, but our neighbors recently just got a brand new Corgi, and his name is Hank. So that's out. And then we were thinking of um, Jackson, but their other dog is Jack, and I call him Jack Jack, so that's out. And then Sean kind of likes Hunter. So we'll, all of them, we're, we're, we're keeping it all open and available, but we'll see. We have a couple weeks here, but we are super excited. He is lighter like Toby, so I'm excited because I love, we haven't had a light golden since Toby. And I think Riles really prefers having a boy dog here. So, okay, so we're gonna dry it now. Once again, on our quick dry tool, it is one temperature, it's 150 degrees. Even though it's got two settings, it's not a different setting, it's just high and low. Also, um, it is not an embossing gun. A lot of you are thinking, well, if I have an embossing gun, do I really need this? I say yes, I think the embossing gun is way too hot. And for kids, it's, it, I mean, you can see it's not hurting me at all. And it's, it's made to work with our paste. All right, so we're going to finish this out. We're going to do this honey part. I'm going to grab my mini squeegee here, just like that. And we're going to use our shimmer gold. Now, our shimmer gold, we get this question a lot too. I bought some of your shimmer gold, Ken, and... It is not very glittery, and I will tell people this and reiterate, our shimmer gold is not supposed to be a glitter look. It's a very muted shimmer, um, toned down kind of glitter. You can put glitter right on this after you lift it up, but the shimmer is never supposed to be. I think it's, they've never confirmed it, but I think it's mica powder. Mm -hmm. Because glitter will not go through our transfers. Yeah, We've tried. Somebody says, or Nancy was saying, so are they been born already? No. They should be she born. She sent an email out over the weekend saying that they are Within, coming soon. Yeah, first week of April, so that's like 
in the next few days to the next week or so. Oh, look at that. We get to fix a little oopsie. All right, All right. so let's go and show you how I, I clean. Hold on. Oh. I can uh, also do that for these guys. There we go. Can't hear us, but they can watch. Okay. Will you explain what I'm doing? So we're going to turn on our water here to warm. And we're going to, if you have a, if you have one of these that's got a spray nozzle on, that's works great. It's got a little more pressure. And we're taking off the bulky part of the, of the, of the paste. This way, it will not get this peeling feeling when you do it straight from the, uh, down on the, in your sink in your uh, dry erase board. So we want to take the bulk off first. If not, it will stain your your sink. Yeah, you'll you'll see the letter. In fact, it might do it. Let me. Especially on this kind of a sink. If you have a porcelain sink, you won't have to worry about it. But these kind, it's plastic. Yeah. So, so once we get to this point, I'm going to grab our board erasers. And I never put the water directly over it. And we're just going to go back and forth. And you can see how much ink and A, sorry, is getting absorbed, and it is staining the transfer. We're not worried about the stain, because that's why we take care of our transfer. But one thing I will say is, I think the number one thing I see people do wrong on transfers is it's more important to get both sides cleaned than it is to get like this stuff on. So once I have this side, if I don't clean the back side, I'm going to do half of this you're going to be able to see the difference. So this is not cleaning the back side. I'm going to turn on my water. That's cleaning the back side. That's why it's so important. But you can see, look, it, it stains it. If you, so, a, if you got a porcelain tub or uh, using a bathtub or a sink sink, it's this plastic material style that it will kind of stain. All right, I'll meet you over there, Sean. We'll kind of explain to you to what, what just happened while I took right back. I'm going to go back here. So you two people, as you saw, we uh, cleaned both sides. We got the bulk of it off first, and then we got, then we put it in the sink and cleaned it up, and then We've cleaned both sides. We have to clean both sides to make sure all the paste is off and nice and clean. It's going to stain because the pigments of this stuff is a lot lot stronger than the old, older stuff. Or a lot better than, yeah, better, a lot stronger than the older stuff. Yes. Okay. So that is our tips cleaning. I do have a few mistakes here. I'll show you in a one quick sec. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to put this off to the side because I really want to stress the fact that what we've seen with our transfers and our paste is you really do want to take good care of this stuff so you get the most out of it. So number one, transfers. We will, Chalk Couture will say you should be able to use transfers between eight and 12 times. And that is truly the word of Chalk Couture. When it comes to us, I always tell people, if you take care of your transfers and wash them as soon as you're done and wash them appropriately and do both sides and let them air dry, We've had some transfers last between 20 and 50 times. Now that's not always the case, but once again, if you take good care, care of it. Same goes with this ink, or this paste, sorry. The reason I keep calling it ink is it reminds me of ink. But we take our multi-tool, we're gonna go around the perimeter of the jar and then underneath this. Now, this ink, gosh, this paste is true. It, it's it's a lot better, it's easier, it falls down, but you still are gonna wanna clean your jars because air can get in there. And as soon as you get air in there, um, your paste will start clumping up or and getting a, film. getting a film. You can incorporate it, you can ditch it, but once again, if you take good care of it, you'll get a lot more use out of it. So once I get to this point, I'm just gonna take spray, Gonna stir in. How do you know when a transfer is no good, longer good? Um, if you rip it. So uh, once you rip a transfer, it's pretty much done Z. Um, and then I do put one half spray on the top again. Uh, 
So that is when it's usually done, though. And remember, always use distilled water. On, yeah, on the, um, he's talking about while we clean it, not the transfers. But anyways, uh, or if it loses its stick. There is ways to make it sticky again. But for the most part, once you lose that adhesive, um, it's no longer good. So that's usually that. We've, I'll be honest, we've thrown more transfers away because I didn't take care of them and I stretched them because I didn't fuzz it or other cases than I have where a transfer just mm -hmm. has piddled out. Somebody wants to know how many of these do you have? He's got that many. Of what? Of oh, yeah. Of all your squeegees? I don't like... I. You like to use it one time and then yep. in the water. Yeah, it's bad. I know. It's bad. It's bad. It's just my little thing, okay? That's just who I am. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how we can fix little mistakes. So, on YouTube, I'm going to show you guys here. You can see in the honey and a little bit of the black. The black actually dried pretty good. Um, super easy to fix. The biggest thing you need to start with is make sure it is dry. Somebody was saying that if somebody doesn't have this uh, quick dry tool yet, could I, what are the precautions of using an embossing one? Well, you have to be careful because it does get hot, hot. Hair dryer, if you got one, I would suggest using that first until you do get your quick dry. Yes. I don't use embossing gun because that's another way I've ruined transfers because they will, they're a piece of fabric. So if you get it too hot, believe me, they will shrink. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is fix up a little bit of our black hair. Um, so it's pretty easy. You can take our detail tool anywhere you want to clean up the black and just kind of get in there and hit it like so. Because now that it's dry, it's kind of like a, a crust. Yeah. Almost. And then I use ammonia free glass cleaner and a Q-tip. I roll it around, go in here. And I just dab it like so to get it nice and clean. Just remember that this new uh, paste takes longer to dry. So you just kind of want to, you know, keep that in mind. We're going to go up to here to the words. And I'm just going to once again go in there. Now, if you find yourself um, wanting a little bit more control, you can use a uh, pokey pokey no jokey tool if you want to get in there a little better. Um... I wish we had kind of a pokey end on this, but I kind of see why we don't, just because uh, it, I could see it uh, rusting in our water. I don't know where my tool went, though, so maybe I won't do that. Well, that was a good idea while it lasted. So I won't spend too much time cleaning up too much of this, because I want to get to the mug, but you can see how easy. This one down here, we are going to take our detail tool. Now, if you flake it off and it's coming off, this, the nice thing about this new formula is, in my opinion, um, it doesn't come off in clumps like it used to. So you're not gonna have to use a air, like a canned air to get it off, but uh, just keep that in mind. If you are cleaning and it's clumpy, what's going on there? So I just take a baby wipe on the detail tool, wrap it around, dip a little bit in my foaming Windex, and I'm going to go in as if this is just an eraser and clean that up because the Q-tip is too big and it would get the majority of that off. So you do have to take this off. All you have to do is rip a little bit off. I just use a um, uh, water-based wipes and then I just... Go like that, dip it in foaming Windex. The reason for the foaming Windex is it is, um, you won't get an, a halo look afterwards. Especially on black. Yeah. Well, it's not so bad on the white, but still it's a great clean. All right, so before we do our final clean on that, I'm going to grab my quick dry tool to make sure it's dry. And while I'm doing that, I am going to go ahead and turn this 
machine on. All right, and all we have to really do now in here is um, I'm gonna make sure it's really dry before I clean it, but basically I'm just gonna hit it with a uh, paintbrush in there to get it real good, nice detail. I'm just gonna take this, just a little bit of foaming Windex, and I'm gonna quickly go over it. No pressure, you wanna go very light when you do this because it will look like you're not picking it up, but you are. And if you go too much pressure, you're just gonna erase the whole design. But you can go super light, and it's just gonna take off that little top portion. All right. And so now all we have to do is take a little bit of paint and fix that. Now you can, we're gonna let it dry and fix this at the end, because once it dries, you can actually take a baby wipe over that and it will just slowly take off those layers. So we'll do that in a quick sec. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about this machine. So as many of you guys know, we were in Maui when this machine was announced. This is the Cricut. Was that important? No. Okay. This is the Cricut Mug Press. Um, the Cricut Mug Press it was designed to work with Cricut's infusible ink, uh, transfer sheets, and their markers. Now, it will work with sublimation. Uh, they just will say it's especially formulated for their infusible ink. A um, couple things on this. What I like about it, super safe. Once again, you can touch all the way outside. It reminds me a lot of their Cricut Easy Press, where it's not hot on the top. They've taken all of the guesswork out of it. Um, so I do like how easy it is. It's very cute. It's nice to look at. It's not clunky. Couple things to keep in mind. It is one temperature, 392 degrees, and it has a six minute timer, four minute warm up, and it only goes from 12 to 16 ounce cups. Now, normally with Cricut stuff, you have to use a poly blend. Um, I do have one of their mugs, so we'll use one of their mugs. Um, but we're going to use our ink. Now, our ink, the big thing to keep in mind on this, when you're done with our ink, is it's still tacky and wet. So if we were to put it directly into the mug press, it's going to stain our mug press. So we don't want to do that. We want to use some of our um, parchment paper. Now, you can also use a toaster oven. Literally, what we do normally is we turn our toaster oven um, to on, set it to three uh 50. 350 put our mug in there once it gets to 350 we leave, turn it off and leave it in there for 30 minutes voila. voila all right so let's grab our ink and i'm gonna use I was going to do a bumblebee, but I think I'm just going to do black in this one. So while that is there, I'm going to grab my parchment paper. And we only need this to really be the size of the mug. So we're just going to take some transfer trimmers. Okay, we're gonna want some tape. Now you can use our placement tape because we are not using sublimation. However, if you want to be on the safe side, you can also use the sublimation tape, but that's, you don't really need to worry about it because we're not using sublimation ink and it won't affect it. Thank okay. you, Kim, for answering those questions for us. Thank you, Kim. She's awesome. She is awesome. What did I do with my, oh, it's right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put my What do you think? Good? Looks good? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go, UB2B. And you really want to make sure um, that beep just let us know that it's at its temperature. On a mug, you just want to make sure you've gotten all of your uh, bubbles out of there. I'm going to grab my black velvet ink and we are just going to add it. Now, 
Um, our black velvet ink is a lot like the feel of our new paste. So if you're used to our ink and you like our ink, you will love our paste. We're gonna remove all of that excess. And I'm gonna grab my detail tool, pick it up in the corner over here. We're gonna let that chillax. I am gonna go wash this. Sean can show you that that mug press is at temp. The light is green, which means we're now at temp. Again, 392 degrees. Uh, Leslie, first time using ink, make sure your fingers are always clean before you touch anything. Clean your fingers. Number one thing, after you ink something, clean your fingers. If you're working with something that's uh, close to the edge, put a little bit of uh, block, uh, some tape around the edges so it doesn't go onto any fabrics. That's another good tip. But don't worry about it. Once you once it's on there and you keep your fingers clean and you yes. take it off, just... So a couple things about ink we get a lot of questions on is... Number one, is ink permanent? Once it is heat set, it is permanent. It can be set onto fabrics, textiles, um, ceramic, tile, glass, all that stuff. Um, so it is permanent, but you do have a little bit of flexibility with it. You guys can see, look at how cute that is. Now, right now, if we were to put this directly into the mug press, it would probably be okay, but we could ruin our mug press um, because inside this mug press is this heating plate and that's that's a uh, basically just a silicone mat yes normally what we would do is just put this in the oven like this and let it dry and we'd be good but because we are doing this with the mug press i'm going to grab my hair dryer on the hot setting this is not heat setting it all this is doing is, is making it uh, not as tacky to where if we put the parchment paper around it, it doesn't shift on us and spread. trying to do is kind of get the moisture out of it because that's kind of like how I do it when I put it on um, fabric material just taking a little bit of that heat getting the moisture off so when you do put on your paper here the it will not be as sticky and gooey all over it correct so the, the big thing to remember is normally we would just put this into an oven so we wouldn't have to worry about that um, but because we're putting a piece of protective paper around it if it's still wet and this shifts on me, I don't really have the ability to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting a little piece of either our placement tape, purple tape, whatever you prefer. You do not have to use Cricut mugs as long as you find some company that can make what's called blanks that are... Uh, polyester uh, well on. that's only if you are using their Sublim product if you're using sublimation. the nice thing about our product is it can go on pretty much any any surface so we could use a regular ceramic mug and we'd be good i need a bigger piece you need stickier tape yeah i'm gonna go grab that other tape okay so let me just re reiterate that if you're doing sublimation um, or the infusible ink, it has to be a, a um, polyester sprayed cup. That's just what those are, and you can get those from other companies too. It does not have to be Cricut. Cricut just happens to sell them as well. For our ink, you can put it on any mug as long as it can fit in there. But again, this is the first time we're doing this, so we don't know what it's going to turn out. We've heard it's been doing quite well, so we'll see. So any mug that can fit in there, and I would be careful and make sure it's not a rippled or a dimpled type mug because it, it can't really meld itself around stuff like that. Okay, so this is um, heat tape. Essentially, this is anytime you're using sublimation on a poly blend, you need to use this tape so it doesn't 
imprint onto your blank. Um, but what's really nice about this is it's really sticky. The, so yeah, the thing about using um, parchment paper, it's almost it's a non-stick material, so it's very hard to stick anything to it. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick a little bit here. And I am going to trim the extra parchment paper around here. And then we're just going to go around the mug. Really all you're protecting is where your design is. So I'm just going to cut. So this, you can see why it's important to use the hairdryer first, because if this was wet, like it normally would be, and we put this on there, um, it would have smeared. But if we're going to use this tool of crickets, you want to make sure that you protect your investment in this. So it's no different than when we do like a shirt or something and we need to put it to where we don't get our transfer on there. So all I have to do is slide this down into the mug press and then push this down. This is going to do a timer for six minutes. So there is no way to speed the time up. You can lift it early though, if you think it's enough. Normally we would do it for 30 minutes, so we're just going to put this off to the side. The little lights will change on it, and we'll see what, what it does. Um, while we're doing that, I'm going to fix this and answer any questions. Um, this is the first time we've ever used this, so we'll see how it works. What is your thoughts on the mug press, Sean? Um, it does exactly what they made it, made it to do, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you're into making, I mean, some people say you're just going to make a mug. How many mugs do you need to make? But people are going to probably make multiple mugs and probably give them, sell them or something. So it's not just to make for you. It's probably mm -hmm. going to be made to make for many, many other people, a couple for yourself, obviously. Yes. Um, again, it does exactly what it says. It presses the uh, sublimation ink or your... Uh, Infuse the link right to it and makes it, and it's it, it turns out really nice. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't work. A little pricey for what they want for it. You know, if they said maybe 129 that might be a little more doable, but... Give it a year, there'll be knockoffs yeah, on the market. Knock, knock it off, right? There's people that um, will do it. Here's my thing on it, because um, I've been getting a lot of questions. A lot of people say, for Cricut, or I mean, for Chocotour, would you do it? It's a hard sell for me because really the nice thing about ink that you don't see in videos because we don't necessarily have the time to show you is you literally just throw it in a toaster oven like this, 350, once minutes. it gets there for 30 minutes, turn it off, let it cool, and it's done. Mm -hmm. So it's a hard sell for me. But for someone that has a small craft room or something, I could see that. Once it gets to three minutes, I am going to check it because this is, well, no, because we normally put it for 350, but it's not pressed on. I don't know. What do you yeah. think? I don't know. Should we do the um, full six and see what happens? Yeah, we'll do the full six. Okay. I think the longer the better. Um, somebody asked what exactly a sublimation ink. It's just a specialized ink that once it's heated, it turns into a gas. Mm -hmm. Once it turns into gas, that's why you have to use polyester, because polyester is a tubular type material. Holy tubular. And what it does is that the gas then gets trapped inside the tubular part. Ooh, of that was gas. like me this morning before I took my tongs. And then it becomes permanently because it's inside the, the tubular part of the polyester. So the infused, I'll go grab a infusible ink, but I'll be right back. You can. Yeah. So that's what that, that's what sublimation is. It's just a specialized ink that once heated becomes a gas. And then it can be put, placed inside the material. That's why you have to use polyester, because polyester is the type of material uh, that can take in that gas. So here are some actual sublimated using... The infusible ink. Infusible ink. So you can see where um, it is actually ink. That is weeded backwards, put onto the mug, and then because it's a poly blend, it actually is basically it's cooked hard. into it. Yeah, there, hard. this is not coming off. Yep. Our ink very rarely will come off either, but this, you know, was cut on a machine, then we weeded it, and it is taped down to where you don't have to worry about putting anything on it because there, it has a protective sheet. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see in here our parchment paper is starting to burn, so we might have needed to put more parchment. 
Mm, parchment paper really should not burn. Not but if it does, it's not burn. hurting it. It does say in Cricut's uh, thing and most sublimation inks uh, that your parchment paper might brown. I'll show you guys what that looks like here. So once again, I do like it's safe. Little kids can touch it. It's not going to burn them. If you really want to make mugs and it be quiet or you don't have to run up to your kitchen and you don't have a toaster oven, I could see that. It's a hard sell for me, but I said the same thing about the Easy Press. I was like, why do this if we have an iron, Sean? Why would I buy this? But then I used an iron and I was getting uneven results. It just wasn't convenient. Um, is there other products like this on the market? There is. There is mug presses. There is... Uh, uh, like if you get a heat press and it's a uh, five in one or a seven in one where you can change it out. Mm -hmm. So there is other things on the market. Cricut just does what Cricut does. They make it to where it is cute, compact, and very easy, but there is no customization. You cannot mix up your temperature, your time, nothing like that. I'm going to go um, grab my, I'll just put it on this because so this will be hot when it comes out. On the sublimation, they are uh, dishwasher safe. Mm -hmm. You can use them. They're not. There's nothing. It is inside a material, so it's totally fine. Is it microwave? Microwave safe? The ink is, but the cup needs to say that it is. Most of them are. It's all depending mm -hmm. on the. Just wash your microwave. Yeah. So if the if the mug says it is, it, it's fine. Yeah. So totally you fine. do not need to use a sublimation monk with our ink. Nope. And go on anything. This mug press. If you go to Cricut.com, they're going to say it's to be used with. Sublimation or infusible ink only. However, I, I just like they also said it shouldn't do 16. I've seen people do tumblers in here. So we're almost to our time. Once we're at our time, it makes a cute little beep sound. And then you're going to lift this up. The cup will come up. Just keep, be very careful. The part that's the hottest is over here. Um, the, the handle part is not hot. Yep, so it does not get hot at all, which is kind of cool. So you can pull it right out without even burning yourself. Just the cup. Itself would be hot. Carol says, I'd rather just use my oven and be done with it. I, I, I kind of... Um, and you can do multiples. You can do yeah. in an oven. You can do 10 without having a problem. Here you just one at a time. What is this doing? fun? Is it cool? Sure. So you can see, we're going to put it right over here. I'm going to move this over here and turn it off. And you can see it browned it, which we knew was going to happen. Just keep in mind, this part is hot. Either use a... Um, oven mitt or something. Uh, do not do what I'm going to do and do this early just to for sakes because you will burn yourself. But I'm just going to grab this tape over here. Right yeah. We're going to let it dry, but there it is. Let me show YouTube. We're going to let it air dry here. I'm going to grab our hair dryer and kind of get it to cool so I can see if it is good to go. Since this is our very first mug, you would have to see if anybody else has done a steel or metal tumbler. We don't know. We have no idea. We what don't. It, so the first test I'll do is I'm just going to take this window cloth. So we're good there. Mm -hmm. Next test. And this is still pretty hot. Oh, that's very hot. Yeah. But you can see I'm taking a baby wipe. So, it worked pretty well. Yep. So now, can I put this under cold water without shattering it? No, it'll, 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 it'll shatter. shatter. Okay. It'll shatter. Um, it's too cold. It'll you can see out. it's not coming up. You can see the steam rising off that. Wow. <laughs> it's that hot, but it's on there. Wow. So, it works. So it worked. So now that because it works, um, You could probably put it on any other type of mug that fits in there. Correct. So um, we haven't tried anything like tumblers or stuff like that. I'll be honest. Um, we were looking at going into sublimation ink, and we might have changed our plan. So, but so because this is actually a, a 
something that's been painted on. If you were to take a scratchy something, could it come off? Yeah, it could, but just to let it stay there, just normal washing without using a scratchy, it should stay there. There shouldn't no. be any problem in it not coming off. But if you're going to take a green scratchy or even a steel wool stuff, yeah, it'll probably come off. Sublimation, it will not. Yeah. It will not come off. I mean, it's definitely better than uh, like an iron-on or something being vinyl. I mean, you can feel it raise. It's pretty cold. Just be careful, Shawnee. Yeah. It's raised, but the way we had to do it last time was a really, 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 really heavy um, scour. Like, after it dries, the steel wool. But even that, it was hard to get off. But it works. So I'll show YouTube the finished results. Here we have our board. Now, I still need to do a little cleaning up there. I just want it to dry. This is just for display efforts. But then... Mug. Look at how cute that is. So there you are. Um, we have gotten so many people asking if it will work. Um, I already own the mug press and I'm keeping it because I do like it. Um, however, do I recommend it? <sighs> if you have sublimation printer, yes, I recommend it. I do like it more than any mug press I've ever used before. I've only used a couple. Um, However, for our ink, it, it's a hard sell for me if you have a toaster oven, but it's convenient. And it's quick, six minutes versus 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It is safe, so if you have little hands in here, um, but it's pretty much just mugs or cups, I guess. Uh, but for a lot of people, I know I said I would never get an easy press if I was a cricket or a chalk couture designer. Now I recommend it all the time because it's so convenient and it's safe. So, um, I don't know if anyone else has used it. Let me know what you think. But I have to say I'm pretty impressed with it, it being only in for six minutes. And it's it's good. Oh. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's live and the first peek at us using the mug press. We will be live tomorrow on YouTube at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Um, and we will be... Uh, using the ecan that we're using tonight for this you can catch all of our lives on youtube all week just because we do like the overhead version and sean with the front version we're editing those videos together however we would love for you to join us on actual instagram and tiktok tiktok on fridays when we do them are cocktails and chalking with ken which is always fun wondering if we were doing that this Friday. yes we will be. um keep in mind that this Tomorrow's the last day of the month, so Club Couture members, on Monday you'll be, or excuse me, Wednesday you'll be receiving, Thursday, you'll be receiving a email from us on Fab First. If you're a designer, you'll be getting an email from us and Chalk Couture. That means a new starter kit. We also have a lot of exciting stuff happening in April, so if you have questions on becoming a Club Couture member and what amazing benefits you get, reach out to us on social media or email us or check us out on our website. All of the links now are on our Facebook page and on YouTube, all the links are down below. But thank you so much for joining us. We had a lot of fun and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.